Okay, this is me a short notes because today's a short day because the girls basketball. Okay, they're down and playing the state tournament. And what I need you guys to recognize is today is the second day of 9-2. Okay, so we are on what, page 7, 6, page 6, bottom of page 6. Okay, so here's the deal. Each point is reflected across the indicated line. Find the coordinates of each image. And we are on problem 5 at the bottom of page 6. And we're talking about reflecting the y equal uh, x line. That's the blue line here. If I can bring that up at all. Page 8. Is it 8? Yeah. Okay, I apologize. It's 8 in our packet this year. It's page 8, and this is the y equal x line. And this is my y equal negative x line. Now, keep in mind, these are perpendicular lines. How do I know they're perpendicular? The slope of this one is 1. That's right there. The slope of this one is negative 1. That's right there. The definition of perpendicular is if I take the slopes and they multiply and their product is negative 1, that means the two lines are perpendicular. And I'm going to use that idea later on a couple things, but I want you to know that because as I reflect something across this y equal negative x line, this line, my reflection should be somewhere along this line. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're going. That should be our setup as we get going here, okay? So now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this y equal x line away. I want to reflect something across the y equal x line, and it's a two two. Is a on the line? Remember yesterday, we were talking about it, when you move your face closer and closer to a mirror, and your nose is on the mirror, your reflection's nose is on the mirror. Okay, so it's the same point. So that's why here I have A prime is 2, 2, same as A. Okay, now in my letter B problem, I'm asking you to reflect point B across the Y equal negative X line. Now remember as we do this, some, some things about reflections. The distance from the red y equal x line to point B is the same distance that my reflection will be along that blue line that's perpendicular to my red line. So down here, right smack here is my B prime point, okay? So it should reflect across and check it out. If I have, if I look at this, the diagonals, there's four diagonals away and it's four diagonals away. Point B is negative four, negative four. B prime, I should say, is negative four, negative four. That follows all the rules that we've worked on with reflections. Now, what I'd like you to do is reflect C and D. Pay attention to which line you're using. Pay attention to which line you're using, C and D, okay, as you're going through. In C, you're using the Y equal X. And I want you to think about it, okay? Commit to an answer. And remember, it's on a line perpendicular to the blue line. So C reflects the same distance away, and I keep pointing back to this, it's the same distance away. So it's gonna reflect to here. So that's gonna go and become negative two, two, okay? If I look at point D across the negative line, the Y equal negative X line, okay, the negative X line, get this jump down here, um, I'm going to reflect point D across the Y equal negative X line, gosh, it's not going anywhere, right? So it should be the same. Is it making sense? Now, you guys do point E and point F, okay? Actually reflect them, do them, participate with this, if you would, being present. If you're at home, don't try to do other things. Just because you watched it doesn't mean you watched it if you're not like paying attention. Now, if I'm reflecting point E 
across the y equal x line. So I'm going to get that y equal x line back in there. Point E is that far away from the line here to here. So I'm right here for point E's reflection. So that's out negative 2, negative 3 for my point E prime, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, and I'm going to put my y equal x line back in. Okay, if I grab it in the middle, it's the same line each time. Now I'm going to take care of all my junk that I put on the thing down here. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm cleaning up after I've got, I've, I have uh, visitors. I apologize for that. Yes, sir. For which one are we talking about? For, for E? Pay attention where we're at here. How This is like half a diagonal away, right? So half a diagonal away is right there. So we got to keep in mind that's where we're at. So that's my point E. Okay, does that help? Just for clarification wise. Now, remember, right now we're reflecting based on properties. Okay, so we're kind of learning about it and getting it done. In this last one, I've got y equal negative x line. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to clean up my board a little bit. Get rid of this extra stuff we've put on. So I'm reflecting negative 1, negative 3. It's f across my y equal x line. Remember, it should be perpendicular. And these two blue and red lines are perpendicular. And this is two full diagonals. Two full diagonals away, it becomes that point. 3, positive 1. Positive 3, positive 1. Okay. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing, it's perpendicular. Now, I'm not sure if you thought about this as we're going or not, but really, y equals x is the line we're reflecting across. Bless you. The purpose of this is understanding that we are going to take our x value and our y value because they are equal and switch them. That's been the rule we've been using. I'm not sure if you paid attention to that, so let's talk about that real quick. I'm going to get to the highlighter so we can see this. So in the y equal x line, in the y equal x line, it's been, sorry, i got to get back to my pen. It's been the fact that you've taken the x and it's switched position. Taken the y and it's switched position. Taken the x. Switch position, taking the Y, switch position, taking the Y, switch position, taking the X, switch position. When the line, when the segment's on the line, it's still the same thing, but we're just switching the X and Ys. They're switching their positions when Y equals X. That's our rule. So people are like, what? So that's it. Y and X is switch position. That's our rule. Okay. Now, when we've done the Y equals negative x. Let's talk about that as we go through. We're going to uh, hit on another highlighter here. We're going to use pink um, here, here, and here. When we talk about those, that same idea, I'm going to have to use blue and black here. So I got 4 and 4. It switched position, but we took the opposite. Switch position, but it took the opposite. Okay, switch position but took its opposite. Switch position, but took its opposite. And I used blue. So actually did it the other way, didn't I? That was a bummer. We'll fix that. Switch position, took its opposite. Switch position, took its opposite. Let me fix this one because that's what it should have been. That way, and this one. Took its opposite. So make sure we recognize that we're going through. It's just switching positions, taking the opposite of both values. So we have a rule as we go through. Now, I cannot, I cannot emphasize the importance of you making sure you know the difference of these rules and making sure they're on your note card. Okay? Because if they're not on your note card, oops, I can't help you. Okay? You must make a note card. Right now we have five different rules. Okay, and I'm going to show you three or four more. So there's going to be nine to ten different rules as we go through. And it's really important that you're able to put them on a note card and keep them all straight and know how to use them all. Today's assignment will help us keep the five that we've learned pretty much straight. Actually, really more the four that we learned straight for reflections. 
Today is all about reflections. Reflecting the x-axis, y-axis, y equal x-axis, and y equal negative x-axis. And then reflecting across lines as we move them. Okay, so it's all sorts of really funky reflections we're going to work on today. Are there any clarification needs? Anybody still need this screen? We're doing okay? So now, let's do a couple problems. Sherry is walking to school, and I've got to get this back here. Sherry's walking to school, and I'm going to get rid of this. I know it's the answer, but we're going to kind of hide it a little bit. Going to hit on properties? I can't. So we'll just put it down there. You can't read it that well. Okay, so Sherry's walking to school. And before, you know, before I even start that, who has a billiard table or a, played mini golf? Okay, have you gone gone mini golfing or played pool at all? Okay, I'm going to help improve your game right now. Okay, if you can carom, carom is bounce, mm -hmm hit your ball off of successive walls. If you reflect your target over the walls in reverse order that you're going to hit them, okay, okay, meaning the last wall that you're going to hit is the first reflection and so on. And if you can pay attention to that and aim, so long as you don't put any spin on the ball, you hit it squarely, you will hit your target every time because of reflections. And I'm going to give that example right now just off of one wall, okay? But the example I have here in problem six is think pool, think mini golf, think um, minimize diff distance, minimal distance to walk, drive, minimal material used to connect piping or to do some stuff at a junction box. All those problems are solved with reflections. So here we've got this first one, okay? I want to walk from school, okay, to Sherry's house, okay? Or I want to hit the cue ball at this ball, okay, that happens to be Sherry's house. How do I do it, okay? Without hitting it directly. I've got traffic in the way. Reflect it across the thing I'm going to bounce it off of. Reflect it across the thing I want to visit. Because in this story, Sherry wants to go home, but she wants to go home via Main Street. So how can she do it in the shortest possible distance? Okay, so she's got three units. She's going to reflect across Main Street. Reflect three units across Main Street. It's right here. Okay, now I am going to aim from school to our reflection of Sherry's house across Main Street. So I got that set up. Okay, now, if I was playing billiards, okay, what would happen is when I come in contact with the wall, which is my Y axis, my ball would carom, bounce off the wall and back at Sherry's house. Notice these angles. As long as I strike the ball squarely, without, uh, without right in the center, so there's no no spin on it, it'll hit that other ball, no problem, okay? But you got to keep in mind, it's all about how you decide your reflection is going to be placed, okay? If I wanted to reflect it across this wall and this wall, I would have reflected Sherry's house over here and then back over here, you know, well, excuse me, over here, and then my first aim would have been, you know, towards that, you know, final destination, so I can go hit the two two walls and then hit that Sherry's house, okay? But that's kind of that extension of this skill. Right now, all we're doing is walking, and we're going to outline the direction she's going to take, and it's right here. So the blue is the direction that we're going to take from school to Sherry's house, and this is the stuff I did to do that, okay? This kind of is a... Um, Shortcut, reflect the destination over Main Street. So we reflected Main Street, which is our wall we're going to bounce off of. We reflected Mary's house. From school, the shortest distance is towards the reflection of the house, okay? Or the best shot is towards the direction that it came in contact with the wall. Uh, when we arrive at Main Street, continue directly on to school, and we will arrive at Main Street on the point zero four. Do you see that point zero 0.04 from the XY coordinates where they cross? That's where it's at. And we'll move on. 
okay? So I'll leave that screen up. While I leave that screen up and people are kind of jotting down the directions, go on and do that second problem, okay? Problem number uh, eight, or excuse me, seven. Problem seven is the next one we're doing. We're doing these. Yeah, we're doing these. Okay, so make sure that you're focused on getting these done. You guys are doing this one on your own. See how it works. It's very similar. Let's pretend right before she left school, she realized that she wanted to get a new book, whatever that book was going to be. Okay, so she's going to go to the library get a book. Okay, what direction? Or if she comes in contact with Main Street, what's the minimal distance she's got to walk to walk from school to Main Street to the library? Okay, so go ahead. It's a redo of the entire problem, but now this time our aim is the library. So reflect the library first. Go ahead. Give it a try. Okay, in a nutshell, we are going to take our library on this problem, reflect it, those three units. we got three units. That's our library reflection. And now we just take aim, which means from school, I'm going to go to the library, and I've got a cross at 0, 05. Okay, so I'm going to go to Main Street at 0, 05, and I'm on my way to the library. Sherry walks to Main Street to the point 0, 05, then to library. Okay, now we're assuming a couple things. That Sherry's incredibly strong if she comes into contact with something in her path that she can move it, okay? We're assuming it's wide open there. She's not jogging around different blocks to make it happen, all right? So it's as the crow flies, direct along the lines that we have. So this other one would have been here, back to there, okay, for the green, all right? Are there any questions? Okay, hope things are going well. We got 9-3 coming online for us tomorrow. Have a great night.